All right, everyone, let's dive into a real UFO puzzle. This thing from the Chilean Navy back in 2014. And let me tell you, this isn't one of those blurry photos where you're trying to see a blob. It's really clear visuals. Multiple people saw it. They even had experts analyze it and get this. Even the Chilean government put out an official response. It's going to be a wild ride. It's definitely a fascinating one. And you know what makes it so interesting? It's not even just what the object was, but it's how it moved the heat signature it was giving off. Those are the things that have really stuck with people interested in UFOs and beyond. It's almost like the bigger question isn't what it was, but what it could do. You got it. This wasn't just some tiny speck way up high. So imagine this, November 11th, 2014, off the coast of Santiago, a Chilean Navy helicopter crew. They're on a routine patrol, probably expecting a calm day, you know, checking out the ocean view when, bam, they see something totally unexpected. And lucky for us, they were recording with an infrared camera. The footage shows this white oval-shaped object, and it's moving super fast. But here's the thing. It's making these moves that just don't make sense, like really sharp turns, changing altitude crazy fast. Okay. These are moves that would freak out even the best pilots out there. Imagine something like zooming across the sky and then suddenly it's like it slams the brakes and turns on a dime. It's just not something you see every day. Wait a second. It wasn't only the helicopter crew, right? I thought other pilots in the area saw something too. You're right. They did. Multiple pilots who were nearby said they saw a similar object at around the same time. That's a big deal. When you've got that many people saying they saw the same thing, especially trained observers like pilots, it makes the whole thing a lot more believable. It's not just one person's word against everyone else's. Okay, so we've got this crazy footage, multiple witnesses saying they saw it. Something definitely happened. So what did the experts think about all this? They must have brought in some real geniuses to look at this video, right? Oh, yeah, they did. One of the guys who looked at the footage was Dr. Richard Haynes. And this isn't just some guy who's interested in UFOs. We're talking a former NASA scientist specializing in aviation safety and UFO research. So, yeah, he knows his stuff. Okay, so Dr. Haynes, with his super impressive resume, what did he have to say about what he saw in the video? His conclusion. Whatever it was, it didn't match up with any known aircraft or natural phenomenon. Remember those crazy movements we talked about? It wasn't just that they were strange. It's like they broke the rules of how we know things fly. And then there's that whole heat signature thing. That's what always gets to me. You can explain away something you see with your eyes in a lot of ways, but when something's giving off heat, that's a whole different story, right? You're totally right to focus on that. The infrared camera on the helicopter picked up a clear heat signature coming from the object. It wasn't just reflecting heat like a weather balloon or some birds might from the sun. This thing was generating its own heat. That changes everything. Yeah, it goes from like, huh, that's weird, to whoa. What is that thing? So we have clear video, multiple witnesses and experts saying this is not normal. So, of course, people had some theories about what this thing could be. Uh -huh. What were some of the explanations people were throwing around? Well, just like always with these kinds of things, you have the usual suspects. Some experts were saying it could be some top secret military aircraft or maybe some kind of advanced drone, especially because whatever it was seemed pretty technologically advanced. That makes sense. I mean, who knows what's being built in those secret labs, right? Mm. I bet if we can even imagine it, someone's probably working on it. Maybe even stuff we can't even dream up yet. Exactly. We don't know everything. There's always someone working on something new, especially when it comes to those top secret projects. But that almost makes those other theories even more interesting, right? The ones that are a little more out there. What were some of the more unusual explanations people were considering? Well, for the people who really believe in UFOs, especially in the field of ufology, you know, where they actually study UFOs, there were some who thought this object could be extraterrestrial, like from another planet. Extraterrestrial. Okay, now we're talking. I know it sounds crazy, Rhett, but think about it. If it's not something we made and it doesn't seem to follow the laws of physics as we know them, then where else could it be from? I mean, you've got a point there. But hold on, extraterrestrial. That's not even the wildest idea floating around out there, is it? You're right about that. There's another even more out there theory some people were suggesting. Okay, let's hear it. What's the most mind-blowing explanation for this Chilean Navy UFO? Interdimensional. Interdimensional. Well, now we're getting into some serious sci-fi stuff. Exactly. I gotta admit, that's where my brain starts to melt a little. What does that even mean when we're talking about UFOs? I know, right? It does sound kind of Star trek -y, yeah. but it's something some researchers look at when the normal explanations just don't cut it. Basically, it's like saying this object, maybe it's not from around here. Maybe it's from a whole different dimension, a different reality, and somehow it popped into ours. It's definitely a fringe theory, but you got to admit, it's a cool thought. 
Okay, so we've got all this talk about UFOs and unexplained stuff. What did the Chilean government say about all this? Did they try to, like, bury the story or were they pretty open about it? That's actually what's interesting about this case. They didn't just stay quiet, which happens a lot with these kinds of stories. Right. Both the government and the Chilean Navy, they came out publicly and said, yeah, this thing happened. We're looking into it and we're going to be transparent about what we find. You'd think that would be enough to keep people happy, right? You would think. I mean, transparency is usually a good thing. Yeah. But did they actually say what they thought it was? Did they give any explanations? That's the thing. They acknowledged that something happened, but they didn't say what they thought it was. They said, yeah, we saw it. We have the video we're investigating. But they didn't say, oh, it was just this or we know where it came from. Basic. Admit something happened. Say you're on it, but don't actually tell us anything. Hmm. I can see why people might be a little suspicious. Yeah, there were definitely some people who were not happy. Some people were accusing the government of hiding information, maybe about a threat to national security or something like that. I bet that caused quite a stir. Oh. It's a tough spot for the government, right? You, you don't yeah. want to cause a panic, but yep. people probably deserve to know if there's something weird flying around. Mm -hmm. Especially if it seems like it's some fancy tech. Exactly. It's like how much is too much information to share and who gets to decide that? That's a discussion that goes way beyond this one UFO thing. It makes you think about the government and the public and who should know what. And the thing is, this whole thing with the Chilean Navy, it's not like this was the only weird thing that ever happened in Chile, right? They've had other UFO sightings, haven't they? That's right. This wasn't Chile's first rodeo with the unexplained. They've got a pretty long history of UFO sightings going back decades. Some people even call Chile a UFO hotspot. It's like that one back in 1977, right? With the Chilean Air Force pilot, what was the story? There? Oh, yeah, that's the Lancamilla UFO incident, one of the most famous UFO sightings in Chile. A pilot said he came across this metallic disc-shaped thing, and it was moving so fast and making these crazy maneuvers like nothing we've ever built could do. Makes you wonder, what is it about certain places that seem to attract these UFOs? Is it like something about the land, the magnetic field, something else that makes these spots more likely to have UFO activity? That's the million dollar question right there. It's got UFO researchers scratching their heads. There definitely seems to be a pattern of UFO sightings happening in the same places over and over again. Now, whether that's because of the environment, some kind of energy thing or something we haven't even discovered yet. Well, that's something we need to figure out. It's like these places are calling to these UFOs, whatever they are. So with all the mystery surrounding this 2014 Chilean Navy thing, it's no surprise that it wasn't just a local news story, right? I bet this thing went global. Oh, it totally did. It wasn't just Chile talking about it. The whole world was hooked. People everywhere were watching that footage, listening to the witnesses, and just trying to wrap their heads around it. It sparked debates among everyone, experts, UFO enthusiasts, regular people, you name it. And why not? It really makes you think, what else is out there? Yeah. I mean, if even one of these UFO sightings is the real deal that changes everything we think we know about you know, everything. You got it. It challenges our understanding of technology, physics, even reality itself. And that's the power of cases like this Chilean Navy incident and other really convincing UFO sightings. They make us question everything, and that's a good thing. It's true. So after really digging into all of this, the footage, the experts, what the Chilean government did, even looking back at other UFO sightings, mm. what are you thinking now? If you had to bet, was this thing a case of mistaken identity, some super secret tech we don't know about yet, or something even crazier. Honestly, if I had a clear answer to that, I think I'd be up for a Nobel Prize, not just chatting with you. The truth is, even with all the evidence we talked about, the Chilean Navy UFO, it's still a total mystery. I guess some things are meant to stay unexplained, for now at least. Mm. Keeps things interesting though, right? Absolutely. And that feeling of wonder that drive to figure out the unknown, that's what keeps us moving forward. It's how we learn and grow. So what about our listeners? If they're finishing up this deep dive, what's the one big question they should be thinking about? What's the thought we should leave them with? It's simple, really. Keep looking up. Pay attention to what's happening in the sky above. You never know what you might see. It's like we walked up to this door and it was locked. And we finally like jiggled the handle just enough to get a tiny peek inside. And what we saw in there, it's like a whole different world a whole different way of thinking about things, and we're just starting to understand it. It really makes you realize how much we don't know and how what we think is true can change. You know, what seems impossible today might be normal tomorrow. That's why it's important to keep an open mind by, like, 
keep asking questions even when the answers are hard to find. It makes you think how many other times has something like this happened, but maybe there wasn't such clear video or maybe people didn't feel like they could talk about it. I mean, we hear about these kinds of sightings all the time, but it's not that often that we have this kind of evidence you know, with video and multiple witnesses. That's something that a lot of UFO researchers think about a lot. Are these isolated incidents or are we only seeing a tiny part of something much bigger, something that changes how we understand what's possible? It makes you question our place in the universe, you know? It really does. Yeah. So after going through all this, the footage, the experts' opinions, how the Chilean government reacted, and even looking at other UFO sightings, what are your thoughts? If you had to guess, what do you think this was? Was it just a case of mistaken identity? Was it some kind of secret technology that nobody's supposed to know about yet? Or was it something even wilder than that? Well, if I had a definite answer to that question, I'd probably be up for some big award, not just hanging out talking to you. The truth is, even with everything we've talked about, this Chilean Navy UFO, it's still a mystery. I guess some things are okay to not have all the answers for, at least not yet. It definitely keeps things interesting. For sure. And that curiosity, that feeling of wanting to know more, that's what keeps us going. It's how we learn and discover new things. So for everyone listening out there, what's the one question they should be asking themselves? What's the thought we should leave them with as we wrap up this episode? It's pretty simple, actually. Keep your eyes on the sky. You never know what you might see up there. Love it. Everyone listening, keep looking up. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one to see something amazing. Maybe you'll be the one to help us understand what's really out there. Thanks for coming along with us on this incredible deep dive. We'll see you next time. And until then, keep exploring the extraordinary.